Hi. In this slide, I just want to explore sort of more angles on this issue of how do we turn the boss surf game into adults and partners. Uh, I contended that it really takes two people to play because in theory, a disgruntled surf can always leave. They don't have to stay and put up a lousy pay and lousy uh, environment and, and no growth and so forth. So what do both people want and what are the opposite sides of the same coin? Uh, clearly, everybody, not just bosses, you know, want power. I mean, let's face it, uh, we may be a surf at the job, but at home with little, little kids, we're the boss. So we have that role to play. All of us at one point were two and a half years old, and we, we sort of having a little power trip and wanted what we wanted when we wanted, sort of impatience and so forth. And it takes a lifetime for us to all sort of grow out of that more or less. Um, but the flip side of wanting power is I don't want any power because then I don't have any responsibility. You know, I just can check out and show up and sneak along. Um, better to let somebody else be in charge, uh, be the expert and tell me everything I want to know. Then I don't really have to take any risks. And, you know, if I take a risk, I might fail and that might be traumatic. So I don't, I'm not really schooled in how to do Kaizen and fail forward in very small little baby steps and, and frame it as it's not personal, it's a learning opportunity. Um, and uh, everybody would like to have esteem because I'm large and I'm in charge, I have the answers. And certainly again, as a parent at home, we know what that's all about. Um, whereas at the, at the job, we're willing to trade giving the boss you know, the you're the man, you're the woman kind of treatment. Um, so we're sucking up, of course. But again, we just have security and we have no stress at all. Um, now, over time, uh, there are lots of things to not like about this. So we can, we can complain, say, you know, I could have been a lot better except, you know, my boss, this, that, whatever type of thing. And of course the boss can say, you know, I could have been a lot better, but I can't get my employees, my sales force, you know, let me scapegoat, let me blame it on the, the, the company and so forth, as opposed to taking personal responsibility on both sides of the coin. Now, historically, uh, one of the ideas of being the boss and not sharing the information was if you could hire them cheap and work them hard, then you could make uh, more profits at the expense of the employees. You could make more profits at the expense of the customer. But those were in the days when things were in allocation and we could say caveat emptor, buyer beware, uh, all sales are final, cash only. Obviously, in a world of glut supply of excessively equally commodities where the customer knows exactly what they want to buy 90% of the time, it's a demand replenishment story. Um, and there's too much distribution capacity in a consolidating, contracting, profitless world. There aren't any riches to be exploited on a simple uh, basis. What we have to do is <clears throat> work together to have a, a highly tuned um, kinetic chain that's focused on uh, the service value equation and the key customers in that niche, one niche at a time. Uh, so, frankly, there's the only, we we can't exploit each other. We have to work together to to make something, uh, you know, expand the pie for everybody. Um, one final way of sort of framing this, particularly when we look at the at the idea of of change stress, is, and I don't mean to put you know many or any employees at the level of a house cat, but uh, some of you may have seen. Um, uh, cats that sit at a window looking at a bird intently and they're twitching their tail. And if they were thinking, it would be something like, hey, little bird, you're just lucky this glass is here. Otherwise, I'd eat you to pieces. And I, I grew up in a family where we had dogs. We didn't have a cat. And I was over at a friend's house when we were about 10 or 11. I said, well, why don't we let your cat outside, um, you know, so he can go get those birds. And the, and the kid said, well, no, our cat's a house cat. It's never been outside. I said, really? And they said, yeah, he doesn't have his front claws. And I said, oh, gosh, what a shame. They was sort of like a birth defect. Oh, no, no, we had the claws removed. I, that shocked me. And then he told me not only that, but it was a male cat and he had, had something else removed. That really shocked me. But nevertheless, we decided, well, let's do an experiment. Let's just take the cat and pitch him out on the front stoop and see what he does. Like, you know, because we're, we're there and we can protect them and so forth, you know, as best 10-year-olds can figure this all out. Well, we put the cat out there and he was so scared, he just was frozen for maybe two, two or three seconds, didn't even move. 
And then finally, it kind of tilted us out a little bit one way. That's outside, a little bit inside, and zipped inside and hid in her bed for three days. So a lot of people kind of talk tough, you know, like, well, I, you know, I'd like to do this and whatever, but my boss keeps me from doing it. But when we give people the chance, oh, my gosh, you know, it's it's scary. But the key there is Kaizen. You just make the baby steps so small, so simple, so trivial, then he says, sure, let's just take one step, a second step, let's just get moving and, and start to realize that, oh, this is all about learning. It isn't about personal failure or esteem or anything like that. So hopefully we can start to move towards a culture of learning and growing uh, and everybody can be an adult partner. Thank you.